I think it's fascinating. You've just been raising money. And congratulations, 100 million in excess of in a Series C equity and debt financing. What do you want to do with that sort of money? How do you want to continue to spread the word about what you're trying to achieve over at Tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is a part of the IVF lab that really hasn't seen technology or innovation over that, almost that entire period that you talked about. So almost 40 years. And it's really, we're, we're, at, a, we're at a point now with the, the speed and the growth that we're seeing in demand for fertility services, whether they be help with infertility or help um, on a proactive basis with fertility preservation and women freezing their eggs. The sheer scale and the demand of specimens that clinics are now having to keep up with is really unsustainable in terms of um, how the existing infrastructure can handle it. So we're talking about millions of frozen eggs and embryos um, today being managed by IVF labs, to, which will evolve into hundreds of millions over the coming decade. And you just showed a shot there of the, the manual um, analog, hugely outdated process with the, you saw the handwritten labels um, that is that is still in place today to deal with this incredible scale. So Tomorrow Life Sciences brings the first automated uh, platform for the tracking, the management, the storage, and the monitoring of those millions and millions of precious frozen eggs and embryos at the heart of nearly every IVF procedure and replaces those outdated systems. It brings technology and innovation and that this piece of the lab into the 21st century, setting a new standard of care for these precious eggs and embryos. It's sort of extraordinary that over the 40 years, it hasn't been discussed more. The taboo in some way still is there. I myself was an IVF child and that has now, we now know so many people friends, family members who are depending on this technology, how much of a hard or easy conversation is it to have it with venture capitalists at the moment? Do they understand the need that's there? I think we're at a stage today, and this will increasingly continue, where we all know someone. You know, you're an IVF child. There are going to be more and more IVF children. I'm an IVF mother. I think we all know someone going through the process or thinking about going through the process. To some degree, I think social media helps um, in that respect. I think we also live in a world where transparency is demanded. It didn't used to be the case, but transparency is now demanded by consumers and patients. And I think that the investment community, the VCs or anyone else, the investment banks, so on and so forth, I think everyone sees it as a, as a human being, as a user, as a potential patient. So it's definitely um, understood. I think, or certainly I think it's becoming better understood. And I think there's, you know, there's generally um, a, a lack of, uh, or, or sorry, there's a there's surprise at the extent to which this existing infrastructure just hasn't kept up with the demand. And we're really at a point now where it's an inflection moment. Mm. Um, everyone, you know, everyone is talking about it. Um, it's, it's great that the taboo is being removed, but now we've got to help these clinics bring this lab into the modern day because it's time. It's time. We can't be dealing with a system that was ultimately born out of the barnyard. Yeah. We've got to be using technology. Um, it's just the, 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 the current system can't cope.